Hello everyone, uh, welcome to It's All About Economics. My name is Surat Sharma and uh, uh, today's topic is classification and tabulation of data uh, uh, that belongs to a paper called Statistical Methods and uh, it is from Unit 1. Uh, uh, for more details you can email me or you can text me. So, uh, what are the objectives? Uh, in last class, we have gone through the importance of statistics. Uh, we breathed out uh, uh, what is observation, population, and sample. As far as the statistics is concerned, uh, we got to know about uh, variables and types of variables very briefly, and then we uh, uh, we breathed about uh, methods of data collection as uh, survey, experiment, and observation. In in this class, we would be uh, uh, having some information on the importance of classification and tabulation of data uh, further we'll be uh, having classification of data and its types and uh, ultimately will lead to tabulation of data now uh, what after data collection actually if we have collected data uh, uh, by by different methods of data collection what next we are going to do so when you collect data your data is actually in raw form or it is in ungrouped form uh, you can use uh, many statistical softwares to to actually uh, 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 to actually uh, put your data into into raw form or ungrouped form uh, uh, mostly your data is unorganized and there you are unable to present it meaningfully because you don't have it sorted or uh, you don't have it in uh, in, a, in a in a summary form uh, further you cannot have a statistical analysis of it uh, uh, until and unless you you don't have uh, 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 group data or you don't have meaningful data so what can uh, we do then so uh, actually uh, what we can do is we can condense a mass data to make it readily comprehensible or we can uh, uh, arrange and organize data for meaningful presentation and interpretation uh, and 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 that is uh, the the idea behind classification and tabulation the process of grouping data is actually called classification of data uh, uh, similarly uh, the process of tabulation uh, comes just after classification and uh, sorting and and systematic arrangement and presentation of classified data is called tabulation only further uh, you can you can see this this chart and by this you can actually uh, get a comprehension about classification of data if we have collected data on population then we can divide or classify our population into rural and urban settlements Further, uh, we can divide our population uh, in male and female. Uh, so we would be having an information on what percent of uh, population is in living in rural area, what percent of uh, percent of population is living in urban area uh, uh, with the help of a sample. Uh, further, uh, if you are classifying. Uh, it using uh, sex then um, how many male are there in rural uh, uh, settlements how many females are there and then if for the same uh, how many male are illiterate how many male from rural settlements are literate similarly how many females uh, in rural settlements are illiterate and uh, uh, rural females are literate similarly you can go uh, for urban areas and so on this 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 chart can go uh, a long way so what actually this classification of data is uh, doing or helping us to it is condensing the large data set so uh, we have a raw data and we are condensing it uh, similarly it allows a comparison we can compare uh, uh, the literacy rates uh, for male uh, to female and uh, for rural areas to urban areas and so on it uh, draws uh, valid inferences for us we can we can inference whether the literacy in uh, for females in rural areas is less or somewhat more than the literacy uh, for females in urban areas uh, next we can eliminate unwanted data if we have uh, missing or errors we can eliminate that that thing and we, we can have uh, just uh, an information uh, where we actually want to focus then finally uh, with with the help of classification of data we can prepare tables and further we can make uh, better uh, inferences from this
now types of classification uh, based on the characteristics of data we have different types of classification first we'll be talking about chronological classification uh, what chronological classification is all about uh, from the word chronology you know that it, it, it relates to time period so data are arranged according to the order of time expressed in units like it can be expressed in uh, years it can be expressed in months fortnights weeks daily basis data and so on generally uh, we, we we make uh, uh, or we classify data in ascending form uh, so that we can have data from uh, the early year to the latest year and uh, this is uh, uh, also called time series data for example we can have uh, yearly gdp growth rate for indian economy and as you can see that uh, uh, we have years in ascending uh, form from 2000 to 2018 and this data is from world development indicator world bank and we can we have gdp growth rates here so uh, actually this is also called time series data so chronological data means when data are arranged or expressed uh, in, in in time dimensions now continuing uh, to uh, the second type of uh, classification that is called geographical classification data are classified in different geographical regions or location like we can have uh, data on uh, different continents we can have data on different countries uh, provinces cities zones etc uh, the data is generally sorted uh, using one or the other characteristics uh, for example uh, you can have zonal population of india in 2011 as you can see this uh, these are zonal councils and this is population so this is sorted uh, alphabetically if we see that uh, central comes first then c e eastern northeastern northern southern and within uh, uh, western uh, uh, zonal population is here as per 2011 census uh, next we see that the zonal councils population as uh, per uh, size of population this is sorted by size of population the size of population here is uh, uh, for central this is maximum then uh, we go on with eastern southern western north northeastern population so uh, that is why i told you that we can sort this this uh, uh, data here uh, using one or the other characteristics here the characteristic was zonal council and here uh, we sorted it uh, with the help of population uh, numerics next we um, come to the qualitative classification and what does it mean by qualitative data uh, as as far as uh, qualitative data are concerned these are um, classified into qualitative classification data are classified using attributes or characteristics like sex caste religion marital status area of residence etc it is also called categorical data because we can categorize uh, different outcomes as far as uh, uh, attributes are concerned like for sex uh, we can have male female transgender transgender for religion we can have hindi hindu muslim six uh, christians jains buddhism and so on so we can categorize it that is why we also call it categorical data now uh, we have uh, two types of classification here one is simple classification the other is manifold classification what is simple classification a two-fold or a dichotomous classification is called simple classification uh, uh, for, for an example if a population uh, is classified into rural and urban settlement then it is called a two-fold classification manifold classification means the rural uh, or urban settlements may be classified further into rural illiterate rural literate urban liter illiterate and urban literate that is called manifold classification and this 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 uh, classification may go on so uh, with with more than uh, 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 two characteristics uh, uh, um, of classification uh, that is called manifold classification so we cannot measure it but we only can see the presence or absence of attributes uh, that is the inherent uh, property of a qualitative data uh, for example we can have data on my migration among uh, present generation and uh, uh, whether they, they own agricultural land or not so rural urban migration scenario can be seen here uh, so uh, this is a uh, uh, two cross two um, matrix and uh, with totals uh, so uh, whether owning agricultural land uh, or not is an attribute uh, and whether the person is migrating or not is the another uh, characteristics or attribute uh, so uh, this is how uh, we can we can get to know about qualitative 
classification the uh, last but not the least is quantitative classification as uh, the name goes quantitative means uh, you can uh, 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 you can measure it uh, you can count it you can measure it so data classification is based on such characteristics which are capable of quantitative measurements like uh, you can uh, count or you can measure income uh, expenditure weight height financial debt etc uh, now that we we actually um, uh, got to know about quantitative data in the uh, first lecture of uh, uh, statistical methods for example we can have monthly income classification of households for a sample and uh, this is the uh, this can be an example like we can uh, uh, divide our sample or we can classify our sample uh, uh, with different class intervals of monthly income so below 5000 there are uh, sample household 109 uh, monthly income with 5000 to 10000 the sample households uh, uh, of 172 and uh, so on here yeah there is a very good point to remember that uh, we should be very careful when we classify data and we should uh, uh, be very careful uh, when we choose number of classes the second thing is that there should be no ambiguity if we are considering uh, below 5000 uh, monthly income uh, and 5000 to 10000 then there, there should no there should be no overlapping here there would be uh, cl uh, class uh, um, classification or group classification very clear now uh, the third and the most important thing is we should have equal class intervals um, uh, as far as class intervals are concerned so this is uh, uh, this this class interval is uh, here 5000 here to 5000 and so on now uh, if we talk about class interval what class interval is actually uh, we can have a just like uh, what is inclusive class uh, interval uh, here in inclusive class interval you can see that both the lower limit and the upper limit of the uh, class are included in class intervals it means if, 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 if this is the marks obtained by uh, by a student then this class interval is having the marks from 10 to 14 and all are inclusive and it goes on uh, with 15 to 19 20 to 24 and so on uh, when we talk about exclusive uh, class intervals here only upper limit is included in the class interval uh, so if we are uh, having a class interval of 10, 10 to 15 then 15 would be included here only but if we are talking about 15 to 20 then it is uh, the class interval with the marks more than 15 or equal to 20 so this is this is called exclusive uh, class intervals and this is mostly used in continuous data uh, next is open-end uh, intervals in open-end uh, and intervals either lower limit uh, of the first interval or the upper limit of the last interval or both are missing as you can see here here it is it is not missing the lower limit of the low uh, of the first interval class uh, is 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 not missing but here you can see that the upper limit of uh, the last interval is missing more than 30 means it can have from uh, th uh, more than 30 means more than 30 up to 100 marks if 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 the total marks uh, are 100 now unequal distribution it is mostly used in data which are very uh, uh, which have uh, uh, much fluctuations in it and uh, for that purpose we we actually make class intervals which uh, uh, which are not equal in in, in its uh, uh, frequency let's see if if the here the interval is of uh, 5 units here the interval is about 20 units here the interval is uh, uh, 15 units here the interval is 20 units here the interval is 30 units uh, and this is most mostly used in uh, data with the fluctuated uh, scenario now uh, lastly we come to tabulation after the classification the next process is to tabulate because the tabulation is uh, the key for summarizing grouped or classified data and uh, uh, we can have a table in a systematic arrangement of classified data what what actually table is table uh, arrange the data in a, in a classified manner and uh, uh, it allows the presentation of data in rows and columns we can make rows and columns and we can present 
or summarize data in it. Uh, it, it, it it gives us a detailed or orderly form data it sim simplifies complex data it do uh, comparisons for us it locate omissions and errors if, if 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 they are there for example we can have poverty estimations for india and then uh, 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 you can see that um, uh, here we have uh, years from uh, 1993 to 2011 12 and uh, uh, we have uh, rows these are called rows and these are called columns so we have in rows uh, years and in columns we have uh, a classification like rural urban or total population so uh, in rural areas we can see that the, there the, these are the poverty estimates in urban area these are the poverty estimates and we can make comparisons uh, you see uh, in 1993 uh, what is the difference between rural and urban poverty and uh, what is the difference between rural and urban poverty in 2011 12 so it helps us in comparison comparison of data it makes uh, 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 simple uh, uh, to 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 actually um, uh, summarize the data it it it, it, it allows us uh, uh, the the detailed and orderly data so uh, this is actually tabulation now in last uh, uh, some points are there to remember uh, before tabulation uh, uh, we we must have to sort the data and this data sorting is very important as far as large data is concerned because uh, in present time we have big data and and before tabulation you you should sort your data what what sorting is actually sorting our data is actually arranging it according to its characteristics like uh, we have uh, a sample uh, of population and their uh, uh, male and female in population so we can sort the data uh, um, according to sex so male uh, and uh, female uh, will will be clubbing together now this large or complex data sorting is done uh, nowadays using a statistical packages like Excel, SPSS, SETA, eViews and you would uh, uh, get to know about these things later on um, uh, um, uh, tabulation uh, may be simple might like uh, you can just uh, uh, talk about one character characteristic or one attribute of a uh, particular uh, um, phenomena and it may be a complex one means two or more interrelated characteristics can be uh, shown um, at one time that is called complex tabulation and uh, it helps us in easy referencing uh, Titles and source of table is very important when you are showing a table you just uh, put titles for that uh, and source of table uh, uh, should be there clear separation of cells should be there these are called cells so uh, the cells should be very clearly uh, separated um, to, to uh, have a first impression of that data uh, and uh, ultimately explanatory footnote should be there uh, if you are uh, uh, having a source then if, if you are putting some notes there uh, so you can put uh, notes like if you have figures uh, in parenthesis you can make it a, a, a note if you want to uh, put it as a significance level then you can have a footnote there so thank you so much for being with me uh, in next class we'll be dealing with some other uh, topic of statistical methods thank you so much